Welcome, everyone. It is time to call the meeting to order. First, the meeting began, being held tonight is a public meeting held under the Planning Act. Notice of collection. Personal information collected as a result of the public meeting are, is collected under the authority of the Planning Act and will be used to assist in making a decision on this matter. Persons speaking at the meeting are requested to give their name and address for recording in the minutes. All names, addresses, opinions, and comments may be collected and may form part of the minutes, which will be available to the public. Additionally, for you, I will do that. Only because you asked. If somebody else asked, I'd tell them to go away. <laughs> so far, essentially, I'll ask for your name and your address if you decide to speak. And uh, because you're here and you're going to speak, you have the ability to challenge this in court. Continuing. Additionally, interested members of the public can email the committee clerk or the assigned planner if they wish to be notified regarding a particular application. Questions regarding this collection should be forwarded to the Director of Planning Services. Public meeting reports. The first portion of tonight's meeting is to present planning, a planning application in a public forum as detailed in the public meeting reports. These reports do not contain a staff recommendation and therefore no decision will be made this evening. Following presentations by the applicant, the meeting will be open to the public for comments and questions. Following council decision, notice will be circulated in accordance with the Planning Act. If a person or public body would otherwise have an ability to appeal the decision of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston to the land, Ontario Land Tribunal, but the person or public body does not make an oral submission at a public meeting or make a written submission to the city before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision. So the fact that you're here, and if you're gonna say something, entitles you to that right. All right, first meeting. Zoning bylaw amendment for 2777 Princess Street. May I ask staff if uh, all notices have been given? Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, this is a public meeting for zoning bylaw amendment file D14003 2023 for 2777 uh, Princess Street. <clears throat> Notice was given in accordance with the Planning Act as detailed in the public meeting report. Uh, we have received three pieces of correspondence via email, uh, which were included in the addendum to this evening's agenda. Uh, the purpose of the public meeting is for the applicant to present their proposal to the public and planning committee and answer questions from committee and members of the public. Staff have prepared a public meeting report summarizing the proposal. Uh, feedback received uh, this evening will be addressed by planning staff within a future comprehensive report once technical review of the application is complete and staff are ready to make a recommendation. Thanks. Thank you. Next comes the applicant. You have 15 minutes to present your information. And they're online. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please go ahead. Oh, I can see my presentation up. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. My name is Sean Legere. I'm senior planner with RFA Planning Consultant. I'm the agent for this project. I was retained in November of 2022 to assist the owner in obtaining planning approvals for the proposed mixed-use apartment building at 2777 Princess Street. Both rezoning and site plan control approvals are required for this proposal. Tonight, however, is the first statutory public meeting for the requested uh, zoning bylaw amendment. The owner is a numbered company, but he is a resident of Kingston and a local business owner. During my presentation, I will provide an overview of the site context, work completed, the plan itself, uh, summarize the technical studies that have been prepared in support of the proposal, the City Kingston official plan, and the subject rezoning application. Next slide, please. For those not familiar with the site, it is known again as 2777 Princess Street and is within the urban serviced area in Kingston's northwest end. Its official plan land use designation is Arterial Commercial. It is currently within the Special General Commercial C2-17 zone. The site-specific provisions for the C2-17 zone permit a uh, existing manufacturing plant and accessory dwelling house. However, these uses do not currently exist on site. Uses surrounding the site are arterial commercial to the north and west, consisting of 
Cataractray Woods Square and Woodbine Plaza, high density residential consisting of Notting Hill Apartments to the east and low density residential to the south. To provide additional context, the Cataractray Center Mall is located just off this image, approximately 500 meters to the east. Site's area is uh, 14, uh, 1,430.4 square meters with 89.4 meters of lot frontage on the south side of Princess Street and 92.6 meters on the north side of Woodbine Road. Next slide, please. As mentioned previously, a series of technical studies have been prepared in support of the proposed development in order to uh, uh, for this uh, transit support of mixed use intensification project on the subject property. From October of last year to March just past, the following work has been completed. Pre-consultation meeting with City Kingston uh, occurred in October of 2022. Uh, RFA, my firm, uh, conducted a site visit in January 2023, um, and a series of reports were completed. The Arborist report and Phase 1 environmental site assessment were completed in January. The noise impact study, traffic impact study, urban design study, and planning justification report, along with the serviceability stormwater management report, um, along with the uh, all the drawings related, so the site plan, elevations, floor plans, grading and servicing plans, uh, those are completed in February and March of 2023. And in March of 2023, we did file the zoning bylaw amendment application, along with site plan applications. Notice of complete application for the rezoning was provided in March 2023. The technical review comments, as uh, previously indicated, are pending and are expected sometime following this meeting. Next slide, please. The noted reports have been prepared in support of the 2777 Princess Street redevelopment project, which will consist of a six-story mixed-use building, 20 meters in height, with 30 rental dwelling units, five of which will be one bedrooms, 16 to be two bedrooms, and nine of which are to be three bedrooms will be provided. This along with 270 square meters of ground floor commercial space. Each dwelling unit will have private balcony, primarily facing Princess Street, along with a common rooftop patio for residents exclusive use. All building entrances will directly connect to public sidewalks. Service and utility areas are to be interior to the building only. 10 street trees are to replace the existing street trees at a one-to-one -one ratio. Two interior parking garages uh, will be provided. Existing access retained from Princess Street will be retained, as well as existing access uh, from Woodbine Road will be retained. And finally, there is 26% or 353 square meters of landscaped open space. Next slide, please. With respect to the proposed on-site parking, there will be 33 parking spaces provided um, into an enclosed underground garage. 11 parking spaces will be accessed from Princess Street, which will consist of uh, two barrier-free spaces, and 22 parking spaces will be accessed from Woodbine Road, which will consist of one barrier-free space. Uh, I can confirm that electric vehicle park charging stations will be provided, along with 35 secure bicycle parking spaces. Next slide, please. As previously indicated, a series of studies have been completed uh, to confirm the feasibility of the project. Regarding the Phase 1 environmental site assessment, a records review, property owner interview, site reconnaissance, and a written description of the investigation recommendations for further work were undertaken. The consultant concludes, there are no areas of potential environmental concern, APEC, within 250 meters of the property and that the application of safety salt on paved portions of the site was the only APEC noted. On this basis, a phase two ESA is not re uh, required and a record of site condition has been filed. Next slide, please. Regarding serviceability and stormwater management, the property is serviced by an existing 200 millimeter sanitary main off Woodbine Road. It is proposed to upgrade the current lateral to a 125 millimeter service for the proposal. The peak sanitary flow has been calculated by the Hermann formula at 1.2 liters per second, which the maximum day per hour demands have been estimated to be 22.3 uh, liters per second and 34.4 liters per second. 
fire flow calculations do indicate that an underground, uh, sorry, under average day demand and that the pressure head at the site is within the 280 to 700 kPa prescribed range. Stormwater from the site will continue to drain to Princess Street and Woodbine Road. Our engineer has also confirmed that the post-development flows will not exceed pre-development flows. It is important to note that the proposed redevelopment will increase the pervious surface area from 780 square meters to 830 square meters, and that the storm uh, sewer flows to Princess Street and Woodbine Road will be reduced. Next slide, please. With respect to the urban tree canopy, an arborist report has been prepared. Our arborist identified 10 trees to be alive on the Woodbine Road property line, which consists of white spruce, Scots pine, silver maple, basswood, eastern white cedar, and Douglas fir. The arborist determined that the proximity of trees to the proposed development does not allow for effective tree protection zones. This said, a one-to-one -one tree replacement ratio is recommended, which we have provided on the plan. Next slide, please. With respect to traffic impact, a volume analysis has been conducted using counts and projections from the four intersections surrounding the site. Level of service issues at Princess and Woodbine intersections with Bay Ridge, along with Midland and Princess, have been identified for improvement, regardless of the impact from the proposed development. More specifically, the increase, uh, the traffic increase from the proposed development will be 12 trips per hour, which is considered to have an insignificant impact to the existing levels of service on the road network around the site. Our traffic engineer also indicated that the existing level of service at Woodbine and Bay Ridge would be alleviated by improving the Bay Ridge and Princess intersection. A signal warrant analysis has been conducted, which concludes traffic lights at Bay Ridge and Woodbine are not justified in consideration of delay to cross traffic and uh, current minimum traffic volumes. Access sight lines have also been assessed and have been uh, deemed sufficient based on road geometrics. The traffic engineer concurs that the parking provided meets zoning bylaw rec uh, requirements and that no loading spaces are required due to the number of units and size of the development. Regarding transit, it has been confirmed that the site is well serviced by six public transit routes with two bus stops within walking distance. Lastly, lastly, with respect to traffic impact, we are currently awaiting technical review comments and request that staff confirm if there are any forthcoming plans to alleviate the noted pre-existing traffic conditions in the area. In the interim, we have initiated scheduling a meeting with staff to review potential solutions relating to the subject planning approvals. Next slide, please. Regarding noise impact, the noise impact study uh, a noise impact study has been prepared in support of the proposed development and examines two types of noise sources, potentially uh, potential traffic, uh, transportation noise from Princess Street and Bay Ridge Drive, which is based on traffic counts from the city of Kingston. An acoustic screen is recommended to be installed along the uh, north side of the rooftop patio, which will be along Princess Street. Together, this together with standard warning clauses on tenancy agreements and six millimeter window glazing construction. Potential off-site stationary noise sources were also reviewed, which include rooftop ventilation and loading docks. It is confirmed that these nearby features will not impact the proposed building and vice versa from the proposal to surrounding sensitive land uses. Next slide, please. An urban design study has also been prepared in support of the proposed redevelopment, which has been des uh, designed to provide a unique flat iron massing with context appropriate height and character, a continuous pedestrian oriented streetscape with main facade, sorry, and main facade with integrated balconies for formal in surveillance, informal in surveillance, a screened rooftop equipment from the street, a variety of colors, materials, balcony and window placement for horizontal and vertical definition, integrated interior service and loading areas, rooftop patio, which is set back from the adjacent Denier's Monument Cairn and open space to the east. The study's findings indicate the site's location can avoid overshadowing and intrusive overlook on sensitive land uses. Uh, it, can also be, uh, it can also provide a transition in height to six stories 
from the mid and high rise apartments abutting to the east being the La Hermitage West, which is 14 stories, and the Notting Hill Apartments, which is eight stories. A landscape open space area is provided over two and a half times the URM8 zone requirement, which is the zone we are seeking. And lastly, that the proposal will facilitate the transformation of a typical commercial strip into an appealing pedestrian environment and urban profile corridor that frames the street. Next slide, please. Brief, briefly regarding the City of Kingston official plan, first approved by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing on January 27, 2010, a five-year review of the OP was appro later approved in August 29 of 2017. As previously discussed, the site is within the Kingston urban boundary and designated arterial commercial. We found that the context, character, and function of the adjacent center corridor extends west along Princess Street beyond Midland Avenue and includes the site through the, uh, to Bay Ridge Drive, which is supported by the arterial commercial areas, uh, designated arterial commercial areas in the vicinity. Finally, the site of the proposed development, redevelopment is considered part of a traditional outmoded underutilized arterial commercial strip where residential development is permitted without an amendment to the plan. Next slide, please. With respect to zoning, the site is currently within a special general commercial C2-17 zone of old zoning bylaw number 76-26. It is recommend, uh, requested to bring the subject property into the new Kingston zoning bylaw under a site-specific urban multi-residential 8 zone. Proposed site-specific provisions relate to minimum lot area, minimum street wall, minimum exterior interior side setbacks, maximum lot coverage, maximum floor space index, and minimum amenity for each dwelling unit. Next slide, please. The following slides are an extract from my planning justification report and provide a more visual representation of the proposed rezoning. Minimum lot area will be from 1,480 square meters to 1,430. Minimum street wall height from 12 meters to four meters for a maximum of 20% of the main building wall. This is to account for the uh, step back in the design. Minimum exterior and interior side yards from three meters to one meter. Maximum lot coverage from 55% to 75%. Maximum floor space index from 3.2% to 3.5. And finally, minimum amenity area for each dwelling unit from 18.5 square meters to 13.5. You have one minute left in your 15 minute time allotment. Perfect, I just have one more slide. <laughs> Next slide, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, next slide, please. And one more, I think. There. In summary, the subject property is uh, a lot of record with existing municipal water, sewage and stormwater services. The proposed redevelopment is considered transit supportive, mixed use intensification at a fringe at the fringe of a stable residential area. Six story height provides a transition from taller eight and 14 floor buildings to the east. The proposed redevelopment's character, scale, massing and materials are com uh, compatible with the context of the surrounding neighborhood. Site location can avoid overshadowing and intrusive overlook on citizen land uses. The proposal is informed by the density, arterial commercial and urban design policies of the official plan and uh, urban design guidelines. Proposed redevelopment uh, rezoning seeks to bring the property into the new zoning bylaw and cons is consistent with the official plan with no amendments required. Uh, and lastly, facilitates the transformation once again of a typical commercial strip into an appealing pedestrian environment with an urban profile and corridor that frames the street. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Along uh, with me tonight is a representative from Ainley Group who can provide additional support uh, regarding uh, traffic impact uh, for the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. So next we will go to the public and ask for any questions of clarification. We will begin with people in chamber and then we will move to people online. Um, once all the questions have been asked, um, the answers will be given uh, all at once. Then council will have a chance to ask council, or committee will have a chance to ask questions. So may I have the first person who would like to speak come up to one of the microphones, to, uh, turn it on, give your name and your address, and you have five minutes to express your concerns.
Thank you. If I may draw your attention to the... Uh, to start with your name and address, map. please. Just with your name and address first, oh, so sorry. for the record. Don Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y. Address 989 Notting Hill Avenue, Kingston. If I may draw your, your attention to the key map that you distributed to us, you'll see that our property is right on the very corner of Notting Hill and Woodbine, where Woodbine at its very east end takes a 90 degree turn and its name changes to Notting Hill. So the north line of our property is on, is on Woodbine. I'm concerned about your parking proposal for parking cars on Woodbine. It is, to begin with, a very narrow road. And to the, the property just to the west of your proposed apartment building is a strip mall that, at the last count, has no less than seven restaurants and is very, very busy. It, it, it uh, draws a lot of traffic to the area, area, as does the corner of Notting Hill and Woodbine. We can attest, since we've lived there for 35 years, that it's a corner where there is a lot of accidents. People are colliding there all the time. Because it is a sharp turn, there are no stop signs, and, and people uh, make too wide a turn, both turning from Notting Hill onto Woodbine and turning from Woodbine onto Notting Hill, and they collide all the time. I maybe didn't hear you, but I understood you did traffic counts and traffic studies involving Princess Street and, and Bay Ridge, but I'm wondering what you've done um, in terms of traffic studies and the numbers on Woodbine and especially its corner of Notting Hill, and I'll tell you why. Not only are those restaurants busy, right now is dinner time, and they'll be very busy right now. Um, Truck traffic, um, deliveries are made to all of the businesses along that mall on the Woodbine side, because of course that's where the back of the buildings are. And when delivery trucks, and some uh, as large as what we would call tractor trailers, uh, tractors with 53 foot trailers behind them, um, deliver goods there, and they're completely unable to make a, th uh, a three-point turn and head back towards uh, Bay Ridge, and so they, they continue east to the end of Woodbine and make the turn at Notting Hill. Um, that happens not only with the larger trucks, but with the smaller delivery vans as well, and also the... Um, the waste bins and recycling bins that belong to the businesses are also on, of course, on the south side, on the Woodbine side. And the large trucks that come to tip those up and, and take the uh, waste away, again, make their exit uh, via Notting Hill Avenue because it is just too difficult to, again, make the three-point turn to get back towards Bay Ridge, so they make their way to Bay Ridge by going around Notting Hill off into Old Colony Road, and then up to Bay Ridge. And your proposal is, I believe, for 12 parking spots along the south side of Woodbine. Is was I correct? No, I don't know if the planet the, can hear me. If you put 12 parking spots, parallel parking spots, along Woodbine. You're creating, I believe, a legitimate danger. And it's also um, an area that's busy for students, um, primarily because of Holy Cross Secondary School, which is on Woodbine, on the west side of Bay Ridge. And the students who live in our neighborhood make their way up to that uh, high school by bicycle, by foot. 30 seconds. Along, thank you. Along uh, 
Notting Hill Avenue and then along Woodbine. Um, and they don't always use the sidewalks, <laughs> um, especially the, the cyclists. So that was my main concern is about the um, traffic issues. And I wonder what traffic counts, traffic studies, thinking have gone in. I, I don't want uh, the planning committee and, and the developer to think that Woodbine and Notting Hill are streets that aren't used already. They're both very, very busy streets and have a lot of truck traffic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anyone else in chamber would like to speak? Yes, please come up to the microphone. So please give your name and your address and five minutes to go. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Stephanie Holmes and I'm at 958 Dawson Court. Um, I concur with my neighbor uh, that the traffic is definitely going to be an issue. And I would also like to just add to that, that um, when you try to bike around there, it's very hazardous. Um, they park, people, people who work in the existing mall park along the back, and I'm pretty sure that's what will happen um, with this one. One of my main concerns is that we really need to, as a, as a city, uh, look at our community balance. I think we really do need to look at the balance between development, the people who live in that area, and the environment. And what I see with this proposal is a great deal of congestion, a great deal of more concrete, more pavement, when we need a residential area, yes, with development, but not congestion. Not where, as soon as I go around the corner, I'm confronted with all this concrete um, and lots of traffic. Um, I realize in your proposal you've mentioned a few trees that you will plant. That's not good enough. When you say greenery and Kingston prides itself, apparently, on environmental uh, sources of like replanting and so forth. We don't have that and we're going to have a limited sky around that area. We already have two, three, four huge buildings in the vicinity. And I just don't think that this is necessary um, in this area. We're just adding to the congestion, we're adding to traffic, we're adding to hazardous conditions. Um, yes, we're in an urban area. And I think in an urban area, we need to have balance. And I don't see that as I'm driving around Kingston's urban areas. We're constantly building. And yes, I am very aware that we have a housing issue, but there's lots of land that is not going to encroach upon the existing members of the urban area. We have a lot of retail and malls that are empty, there are places that need to be leased. I just can't see how we are going to do balance when we just keep adding and adding more and more mortar and pavement. I think the other thing is that we really need to address, we hear it every day, well-being. We need space. Space is essential. That's why I'm out in the urban areas along with a lot of other people who wanted some garden, wanted a bit of respite from traffic jams and so forth. And I think we have every right to space. And if you look at this Bay Ridge Princess area, there is very little space. And I think we, as, as a planning committee in this city, we have to start looking at balance. We have to start looking at the well-being. And yes, develop, developers have, and development has its Necessity, it needs to be done, but not at the sacrifice of people's everyday well-being in their vicinity. I just feel that residents are being pushed and pushed and pushed with all these developers trying to make money. And let's get down to the bottom line, that's what it is. And I need my well-being along with all my neighbors' well-being looked after. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else in chambers? Yes, please come up. You have five minutes. Please give your name and your address. Thank you. Michael Deluche, D-E-L-O-U-C-H-E, 973 Notting Hill Avenue. Uh, I, again, I understand the need for housing. I understand that developers are trying to maximize the return uh, on their investment. It makes sense. It's always a question of what's appropriate uh, for the specific site. And in this case, we're dealing with a relatively small site with an irregular shape being a very elongated triangle. So six specific points. Uh, number one, the maximum lot coverage is proposed to be somewhere in the 70 to 75% range. Even with the change to the URM8 uh, designation, it's normally 55%. This is not downtown. It is not Williamsville. This is Bay Ridge. And that 55% is a significant difference on a lot this size. Uh, number two, the exterior setback is proposed at one meter instead of three meters, uh, especially along the Woodbine side. Uh, coming within one meter of that will have a significant impact on the neighborhood and the, uh, the visibility um, of that area, uh, most especially, of course, to my neighbors there. Um, number three, construction process. Uh, this building is not going to go up quickly, and when you've got 70 to 75% lot coverage and very small setbacks, the construction is going to encroach upon the neighborhood. I can't imagine how they're going to build within a one meter setback without closing part of Woodbine Road for a lengthy period of time. Um, where, all, again, all those construction workers gonna park? Where do they have for laydown area? The neighborhood is relatively developed. Uh, there's not an open field somewhere that they can just use for laydown or equipment. So that construction process at these proposed numbers will have a major impact on everyone in the neighborhood for a substantial period of time. Uh, number four, parking. Uh, so there's access proposed from both Princess Street and um, from Woodbine into the garages. Uh, typically garages have an automatic door that's shut down, usually require some kind of activation. So quite likely you're going to have vehicles stopping, waiting for the door to open, which again is going to impact traffic and increase the risk of accidents. Um, and in terms of parking, currently the business there, Talic Martial Arts, is extremely busy. Um, even setting aside all the plaza and the neighborhoods, which I appreciate is really almost a separate matter, but um, only allowing three commercial spaces for, depending on the nature of the business that goes in there, what's gonna end up happening is those people end up parking on that corner as we that live in the neighborhood frequently see, and that increases accidents. Uh, the neighborhood is going through a resurgence with lots of young children. Uh, kids are out on bikes, out on skateboards, and it could become very dangerous for them. Uh, sorry, that ties into item number five. Uh, and then number six, uh, trees. Um, so currently there are trees on the Woodbine side of the property. And my understanding is that those would be removed in favor of trees on the Princess Drive property. So instead of having uh, greenery on the, the south side facing the neighborhood, you're gonna end up with a massive concrete wall. Uh, so that's something I think needs to be evaluated. So, I mean, this change, again, going from a C217 to the more modern URM8, um, on concept, seems to be a reasonable step based on the city and uh, past projects. It's just the extension beyond some of the base requirements of the URM8 uh, are excessive, given especially the property and the configuration that it's in. Uh, for those in the neighborhood, this will make a substantial change to our living um, and increase the risk to ourselves and our children with uh, traffic and congestion. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in council chambers? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to online. Is there anyone who would like to speak online? For members that are joining us virtually, you will find a button at the very bottom of your screen with a little yellow hand. Uh, you'll press that and I'll be able to see that you are uh, wishing to speak. Sorry for the feedback there. Uh, I see Robert Johnson, Mr. Chair. Mr. Johnson, go ahead and please give us your address. You have five minutes. Well, I didn't prepare anything. I live at 941 Woodbine, which is to the west of Bay Ridge Drive, so I'm not close to this proposal the way some of you who have spoken are. But I'm really concerned about the intersection of Woodbine Road and Bay Ridge Drive. The traffic there is really, really bad now, getting worse all the time. We don't need any more. That's my main concern. And it's an important one. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else? I see Ron Letfauer, Master Chair. Would you like to speak? Go ahead. Yes, Ron Letfauer, 847 Woodbine Road. Um, I have two items or two concerns that have already been shared, but uh, the parking is uh, a serious issue along Woodbine as it is. Um, this will just uh, make it even worse. Uh, the fact that uh, there's only 33 uh, parking spaces that are all internal, there's no parking on the um, property itself, will create uh, issues. Um, in fact, there's 64 bedrooms in the proposed development, and uh, I, don't, I don't think 33 is reasonable. The other thing is, along with that, um, with the fact that there's no loading space, I'm not sure what, you know, with 30 units, there's going to be people moving in and out. And there's going to be um, times when there's going to be vehicles parked and trucks parked on the street while um, furniture is being loaded and unloaded and so forth. The other concern that I have is with the construction. Uh, with this, the majority of the site being covered in proper in building during construction, and I would dare say that the uh, period of construction would be two to three years. Um, I'm concerned where the laydown space would be and uh, parking for the construction vehicles, the workers, and so forth. And I can just see that either Woodbine or a section of Woodbine and or um, Princess will have to be closed for the duration of the um, construction. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody else out there who would like to speak? I'm seeing no movement, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So we will move it back to the uh, applicant uh, to answer the questions. Uh, Mr. Leger, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was trying to take notes at my best here, and I've circled items that I can respond to. Um, as I said, the traffic engineer from Ainley Group is here this evening to um, uh, uh, help with addressing um, uh, that item. Uh, I'll just take a moment though before, and so he can just continue on after me. Um, I just want to clarify a couple of items. Uh, we are not proposing parking on Woodbine Road. So I just want to clarify that. Uh, everything will be on site. Uh, there was a comment about more concrete. Um, I did indicate in my presentation that we'll actually be increasing the existing uh, uh, pervious services on the property. Um, so I did, uh, I did indicate that during my presentation, I want to provide that clarity, um, with respect to construction, uh, um, certainly that, so tonight we are here to speak to the rezoning application, uh, for a statutory public or first statutory public meeting. Um, that is typically, um, uh, brought forth at the site plan control stage. So it's definitely an item that, that will need to be brought forward to that time and uh, certainly I've made that note um, um, uh, being the, the size of the property uh, you know the points are very well taken so I, I'll I will definitely bring that forward uh, and I'm sure staff will as well um, with respect to loading um, with respect to the provisions of the new zoning bylaw loading space is not required um, and I do apologize for not indicating during my presentation uh, but there is a lay-by that is proposed uh, for, so uh, any loading and, and service to garbage, for example, uh, will be accessed from the lay-by. So they'll essentially sort of come in and then drive right out um, in, in that fashion as a lay-by lay -by would function. And um, so that, that has been provided. Um, so I just want to provide that clarity. And... Um, so there's a lot of uh, discussion. Uh, I think it's very well known that there are some uh, traffic volume issues in the area and some other uh, similar type issues. So I'll turn it over um, to our traffic engineer, Mohammed from Ainley Group. And uh, Mohammed, if you could uh, try and um, add to what I already indicated during my presentation and help to answer some of these questions. Hello. Um, do you hear me, everybody? 
Uh, yes, and could you um, correct your name on your thing or give us your full name, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Mohammad Ramezani. I'm senior transportation engineer with Enli Group. Um, as for the as for the uh, notes from the residents, um, I'm almost agreeing with uh, with uh, in in regards to the transportation and traffic uh, uh, with the notes that they made. In fact, it is in line with what uh, concerns uh, city staff they had during the meetings we have with them, and they already mentioned all the um, all the existing traffic issues on the nearby intersections. And um, uh, so just to, um, so I'm going to answer the questions per my note one by one. So the traffic count were collected for all the intersections. So um, um, it's not that only it was on uh, Princess and it was even conservative and then few, uh, cons uh, few intersections away data was, they were, data were collected. But again, um, it should be noted that the level of service of several movements in these intersections are already poor. So we are talking about level of service of the E and F already. So regardless of this, this uh, development, uh, there is an existing condition issue. And when we apply the growth rate, it's going to be um, more problematic unless there are some actions uh, to be done. So it is noted not by the city staff already. And uh, going back to the number of the traffic, number of the trips generated, I want to highlight this. Due to this residential area, we are adding only 12, I repeat, only 12 trips in the rush hour, in the peak hour in the afternoon. And in a, we should note that this is not a new development in a like a fair study i have to deduct the number of the existing traffic because currently there is a sport facility in this taekwondo um, area that it was used and if we want to consider that for the evening time uh, um, following ite which is um, um, our uh, our reference for the trip generation we are not adding more and unlike to the traffic generated by this property, even though the traffic impact study calls for 12. So maybe we are balanced how it is currently when the considering that uh, the sport facility is in operation and after that. Um, um, it was clarified there is no tra no parallel parking on, on a street, so there will be no issue from that point of view. So the exist, all existing conditions will remain the same, of course, and this, this, pro, this development will not have any significant impact from transportation or traffic point of view. Uh, I want to, um, there was a note about the um, garage door opening and closing, while I like, uh, it would be the same as um, any other garage door in if case, if there is any, while I don't see it an issue, but it will be like any other home that has a similar facility. It wouldn't be different. Um, if you allow me to go through the list, uh, I mentioned about the sport facility, the existing traffic, and I mentioned about the 12, it is in the afternoon. Um, I talked about the, um, the parking, um, it was um, answered about the loading. Yes, loading and unloading will happen and um, the, there is a layby, and there are available. There, are, while there is no dedicated space, there are plenty of the spaces that they can use to do loading and unloading on ground floor as well. Um, um, the parking number of the parking, uh, we have provided more parking than requested per the pre-consultation note that we received. So, uh, and it is um, mentioned that it is. Uh, adjacent to the very well-served transit area. Um, intersection traffic concerns, it was mentioned, we are agreeing with the residents and there should be other solutions and other uh, discussions about that. I don't think it is uh, related to the property. Uh, we are happy to help if we can. And um, I believe I answered, please help me if I missed any uh, question, uh, Sean. I believe I answered all of them. 
I think one of the questions that was asked was that there was perhaps not enough parking put into the development and that it would spill over onto other roads and cause problems in busy strip malls and stuff. Can you comment on the number of parking spots that are provided on site and why they would be enough or not enough? Um, so um, there are two parts of that. One, one part is uh, per the numbers provided by the city as a minimum, we fulfill that and I believe we are one spot more if not uh, more than that. So that is one, one note that I can add in that regard. But the other, uh, other note that I can say is um, having properties that they are well served by the, by the transit and being in walking distance with the um, with um, multiple bus stops and multiple uh, bus lanes, that is the one basically changing the equation. With um, the um, a, a property as small as this with uh, 30 units and having this and being in adjacent to that, like while we don't need to provide the just parking justification because we are above the minimum request that it is, um, it is considered adequate from transportation point of view. Um, city staff be able to comment on that better than me, but uh... I, I just have one thing to add. And um, first is an apology for breezing through the rezoning slides a bit quick. Uh, we were getting short on time. Uh, we've done a full analysis in the planning justification report as well uh, regarding the zoning bylaw requirements. And so 0 0.8 spaces per unit are uh, required uh, 0 0.05 spaces per unit for car sharing. So that's for residential, I apologize. Uh, uh, car sharing space, so 0 0.035 are permitted and 0.15 for visitor spaces are permitted. So we are, we, we've done a straight analysis and we're providing all the minimum required parking um, along with uh, uh, those for barrier free spaces um, and also bicycle parking, which uh, will also be provided on site secure. So I just wanted to clarify that we have done a full zoning bylaw analysis and, and we are providing the full requirement. And the last point before I end, even uh, I mentioned it, but I want to highlight the traffic impact study. It shows that we have a very minimum a number of the new trips generated, but that is not included or credited for the existing facility that currently does exist. So we can really say that this has no, no significant impact on existing traffic. And I acknowledge that the level of service currently on nearby intersections is not desirable. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's a few other missed questions. There was talk about uh, children's safety with the increases of uh, the space that's taken over, the need for more trees, the movement of trees from one side to the other resulting in a concrete uh, wall uh, to many residents. Um, and can you comment on any of those three? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I have nothing further to add. Okay, um, I guess we'll move to the committee then. Uh, questions from the committee for clarification or concerns? Councillor Rosanek, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have several questions, and I thank um, the members of the public here for um, asking uh, several of them. Um, I guess to start off is basically the greenery um, is like my one concern, my, I have some concerns with that, and then also traffic. So I don't know where to start, so I might as well start with the traffic, the in and outs. Um, so where would deliveries be um, with Uber, Amazon, skip the dishes? Would that be, um, do you envision that to be off the Princess Street side of things versus the Woodbine Road entrance and exits. Yes. Okay, so that's where the deliveries are off of Princess. Um, I, that's the one thing I like about this development is that you are utilizing Princess Street, whereas the Notting Hill Apartments, you know, didn't. Um, 
I just wish that all of the parking in and out for this complex was off of Princess Street so that we don't have the concerns we've heard from the members of the public that actually live there for, um, you know, squished Woodbine Road. Um, let's see. And then, say Uber or one of those delivery places, like they try to exit the apartment from Woodbine Road. Um, are the back doors along Woodbine going to be locked so it would only be tenants that would be able to go in and out? Um, the, the architecture and the design is a way that the, the, uh, the, the access from Woodbine goes to the basement, so there is no need of that vehicle entering from the Princess Street to exit from the other, other side. They will exit from the Princess Street. Okay. <laughs> all right. So it would correct all... Me, Sean, correct? Okay, so it would all be from um, Princess Street Princess then. Street. So okay, yes. that's good. And that's one good. Note about the um, access, the access, access from the south does exist at the moment. That, like the, there is currently two. We are not adding a new uh, access to the woodbine. Okay, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, in um, your diagram, you know how you have on the ground floor that long structure. You know, at first I thought maybe that's where parking was, but then when I, I zoomed in to our um, our agenda package, it looks like that's just a long hallway, is it, on the ground floor that faces Woodbine Road. Um, is that what that long structure is? You know what I mean? It's like one story. It's too bad I can't share my screen, so I would show you exactly what I mean. Oh, I uh, hear you, Mr. Chair, I know exactly what you mean. Um, that is uh, essentially where the ground floor commercial area will be. Oh. And on uh, so that will be in the single story section. Um, and on uh, the roof of that is will be the rooftop patio that I mentioned. Oh. That is where that will be located, um, that the tenants will have the common access to. Um, so just to clarify, so that's, if, if ever I mentioned there was a building step back, that is, this, that is what I'm, I'm referring to, is that single-story section. Okay. Um, so the six stories is not the full uh, facade, and that we had to uh, accommodate um, some zoning provisions, actually, to provide that relief. Okay, thanks for that explanation. Um, that works out well. Um, I don't think you're predicting to build a sidewalk on, on a Woodbine Road, right? Like uh, on Woodbine Road right now, there is an existing sidewalk on the south side of Woodbine, and you're not, are you doing a sidewalk along the entranceway of your apartment? Uh, so three, Mr. Chair, uh, you're correct. The, the sidewalk is currently on the south side of Woodbine Road. Um, and as, as far as I'm aware, Mohammed, correct me if I'm wrong, it's classified as a local road. Typically with local roads, the sidewalk is only provided on one side. And so that, that is what that is. Um, and uh, so essentially pedestrian and movements will be uh, to and from uh, uh, Princess Street. That, that's the primary flow of pedestrians. Okay, thank you. And then for the um, entrance way off of Princess Street to your apartment, um, are people gonna be allowed to turn left? I don't think there's a barrier or anything, right? So um, cars could turn left back onto Princess Street from your apartment. Um, Councillor Shaves is not as shaking his head. Maybe there is a concrete. Is there a concrete barrier? <laughs> Maybe if you clarify that, I do see one on my aerial imagery here, but it, I'm not sure it goes all the way to the site where I do see um, a central turn lane. Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry, it's, it's oh. been a few months since I've been to the site, so I didn't... Uh, Sean, I, sorry, I lost the, my connection for a second. Uh, there was, was there a question for me or no? It, it was, uh, we were trying to confirm how far the central median extends from the Bay Ridge and Princess Street intersection. I think Mr. And Barr has the answer. Mr. Barr has the answer. Please go ahead. Thanks, and through you, Chair. The the concrete median on uh, Wood, or sorry, Bay Ridge Drive, 
only extends from princess to the top side of woodbine, so it doesn't uh, go through mm-hmm. the intersection. So yeah, right princess. now, that intersection of woodbine and Baybridge is an all-movement intersection. Okay, and thank you, and, th- and through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Barr. What about Princess Street? Um, that's, uh, I think I just heard you say Bay Ridge Drive. So on Princess Street, someone's turning left, like a delivery person, out of the front doors. They can still turn left? Yes, that's correct. Okay. In front of this site, there is no uh, center median. There is a center left and right turn lane. So. There are two lanes of traffic on this section of Princess Street in front of the site that go east or west. And then in the middle middle is that center turn lane where people can make left-hand turns into either sides of the plazas. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. If I may, um, 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 so um, in our analysis, it's not allowed and uh, they need to turn right only. And if they want to later make the move to the median and select to turn left, they can. But uh, the only allowed movement is turn right exiting the property. Okay, thank you very much. That's for you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we know that there's going to be three commercial um, parking spots. How many for visitors? Five. Okay, thank you. Five visitor parking spots. Um, and then where um, the residents were asking about the staging area, where is the staging area proposed? Notting Hill has a grassed area with many trees, and I don't want the staging area to be around those trees because the, st- the equipment will damage those trees. Uh, to three, um, Mr. Chair, I, I believe you're referring to construction. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so, uh, as I indicated earlier, um, I, I've, this is a very point well taken uh, due to the size of the property. Um, it, it's, it would certainly be a matter to confirm uh, with respect to the uh, site plan agreement uh, that will be forthcoming. So, uh, I, again, it's a point well taken, and I believe staff and myself will both bring that forward. So, thank you very much for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Through you, Mr. Chair. So now if I just go into the trees, um, I definitely noticed the same thing that the residents point out. The existing trees are all on Woodbine Road, and this report says that the trees are going to be planted on Princess Street. That gives no buffer at all to the homes that are on Notting Hill and Woodbine Road right now to this development. Can trees also be planted along Woodbine Road, along the front of this building? Can space be made? So three, Mr. Chair, um, a landscape plan will be prepared um, in support of the site plan uh, control application, uh, which will be forthcoming. So uh, that will be, uh, I I think it's understood that we'll be having dense landscaping along the building. Uh, With respect to the current approval and the tree uh, tree assessment that was prepared in support of the rezoning application, it was recommended to do uh, basically 10 trees uh, that were alive or were found and they were located on Woodbine Road. Um, those will be replaced at a one-to-one ratio. So we're doing a one-to-one replacement. Um, with respect to the setback of the building, uh, I think it's, it's been observed that the building is set back three meters from Princess Street. So we do have extra width at Princess Street, less uh, uh, width at Woodbine Road. Uh, that is largely due to the uh, ramp that's required for the parking garage. Uh, That's the side that will be going up uh, to an upper level. And so that's the uh, principal reason why the building has been set back uh, to to that three meter setback. Uh, So that was a purely site function um, item uh, that that came about from the design. And uh, so uh, typically uh, in a, a street tree scenario, uh, you require a minimum of two and a half meters for a street tree. Um, uh, as a landscaped boulevard. Um, so that space has been provided on, on um, uh, can only be provided on Princess Street uh, with respect to the functioning of the site. Through you, Mr. Chair, that's disappointing uh, to hear. Um, 
I just want to go on record to require at site plan underground sprinklers for the trees that will be planted wherever they're planted. And also Talix has um, a lot of cedar hedges and like that are shaped like bushes. And I think uh, we need some bushes to go into this landscape plan, not just 10 trees especially since some of the trees, they're not old growth trees, but you know, like they're pretty well established. They look like they're 30, 40 years old, right? So um, 10 little saplings isn't really gonna cut it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the committee? Councillor Glenn, go ahead. Uh, thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. So uh, thank you, Councillor Osanic for asking several of the questions that were on my mind, but um, just a quick um, couple of follow-ups. So with regards to the commercial parking spots, how did you decide that three were going to be sufficient? What sort of businesses are you envisioning that will be on this ground floor that will only require three commercial parking spots? This is, three, Mr. Chair, this is actually an item that uh, um, has come about with respect to the new zoning bylaw. So, which is now in effect um, in the city of Kingston. Um, so actually none are required, believe it or not. And I, this is a, a big change of mindset for myself as well, because I've been working in planning and zoning bylaws for so many years now. Uh, it's quite, quite the change of thought process. Uh, but with the new Kingston zoning bylaw, no commercial parking spaces are actually required. So we, uh, uh, we're just simply providing what we can, which is three spaces. So again, through you, Mr. Chair, is there a way to determine if this is going to be sufficient? Um, my concern, you know, is we've we've heard it expressed from the residents in the area that they are concerned about overflow onto their streets, and if we're taking away surface parking, which currently is provided for the existing businesses, um, and and that's quite a bit more space, um, you know. Basically, maybe we should be revisiting what's being put in in terms of that parking. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, were you looking for a response? I, I'm sorry, I'm not quite, wasn't sure if there's an actual question there. Well, what you've said is that you're providing what you think you can provide. I'm asking about the sufficiency of the parking and if there's some measure or means of doing that to whoever is kind of capable of answering that question in terms of what would typically be expected in other areas or, because uh, again, I am echoing the concerns of the residents about uh, overflow parking onto their streets. Uh, so typically if there's insufficient parking provided, uh, a parking justification study uh, is requested. Um, and uh, to uh, more in-depthly assess um, needs and uh, other similar um, uh, requirements in other municipalities. Uh, so that, that uh, that's something that could be done uh, as, a, as a typical study. Um, it's my general understanding, and I would uh, please call upon my colleagues at the City of Kingston to uh, confirm the intent with the new zoning bylaw, uh, but uh, I think my general understanding of the new zoning bylaw is that um, parking requirements are being replaced with other items, such as the requirement for bicycle parking, uh, which was not a previous requirement that's new. Um, uh, we are also in proximity to transit, um, so the, and, and there's car sharing uh, spaces that are required. Um, so these items have been replaced with other items in, in the sense that uh, I, I think the general understanding is we're trying to shift uh, things to a different uh, way of providing sufficient parking. So I see James has turned on his camera. I believe hopefully he has something to add to that. I, I saw Mr. Ramazani first and then uh, Mr. Barr. Um, yes, just to add, so we have currently 11 parkings on ground floor that uh, could be used by the visitors and the um, visitors, accessible people and also the um, business. Uh, yes, there are means of calculating what are the um, required number of the parkings per ITE. And, uh, but then there will be, after finding that specific number, there will be the uh, question of 
what will be the share of the public transportation, what will be the, the share of the um, people uh, using the bikes and those they are using the other uh, other services. Considering the location of this building and being well served with these transit services and the number of the bike um, racks provided and existing 11 parkings, this will look sufficient. But again, it is it depends on the type of the um, type of the commercial um, um, land use that is going to be utilized. Um, but um, based on the assumptions made and reviewed by the owner, um, the number of the parkings, considering all of the uh, transportation facilities around, looks sufficient to us. But then um, this is the something that city staff can comment on that as well. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Thanks, interview chair. Happy to jump in here. Uh, the intent with the new zoning bylaw when we brought forward the revised parking provisions is to, specifically when we're talking about commercial, is to look at not oversupplying commercial parking spaces when we're looking at new commercial development. So the idea is that we wouldn't artificially drive up the number of parking spaces required for a development where we see large plazas or new commercial businesses supply too much parking. So, you know, not trying to give too much of that space over to that one use and trying to help encourage the modal shift by increasing the requirements for both commercial and residential and industrial and institutional uh, spaces for uh, bike parking, as well as relying more on transit. And this area is one of those areas that does have express transit associated with it. Uh, so that is why the parking requirement here isn't at a one-to-one -one ratio, even for the residential units. It's a bit lower. It's at 0.8. But what that rate does is it also recognizes that we're not in Williamsville. We are not downtown. There is still a more drive. Well, sorry, double entendre there. There is more of a push for driving in this area because more people do use their personal vehicle to get around. But... What I'm hearing tonight is that there is a concern with the, I guess, the size of commercial spaces proposed uh, at this location and the amount of parking that's being provided for those commercial spaces. Just because we're not providing a prescribed minimum in the zoning bylaw for these commercial spaces doesn't mean that staff aren't going to have discussions about what is an appropriate amount of parking to provide in a location like this. So uh, staff have heard that comment here today from both the public and members of committee tonight. And we will be speaking to the applicants uh, following this meeting on a number of items, of course, but uh, I have heard particular emphasis tonight on appropriate amount of parking being provided for those commercial spaces. So uh, that point has been made and we will follow up on it. Thank you, Councillor Glenn, continue. Uh, thank you for those, uh, those answers. So I'll, I'll leave it to you to, to come back with some recommendations, hopefully with regards to that parking. Um, so then I'm going to move to the greenery. So I am going to um, echo Councillor Osanic in um, you know, encouraging some other greenery to be added. Um, you know, new trees are, as noted, quite thin. Um, but I'm going to ask about the um, sort of terrace space that you're providing. Is there going to be any greenery up there? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, there will be a surface patio. Uh, I've been speaking with the um, owner today. Uh, I believe there's intended to be a number of planters up there um, and such. Uh, it, all of that will be subject to the build, how the site and building will be managed long term. Um, so um, I appreciate that uh, the owner will be constructing the project, uh, but I'm not aware or have had those discussions that he'll be uh, managing the site as well or it will be sold. I'm not clear, uh, but uh, at the moment, the intent would be to provide um, you know, low maintenance uh, items up in the patio area, um, uh, potentially some furniture and planters and such to make the space very inviting. Okay, um, and so just one more question about greenery. And sorry, in I think Mr. Park had an oh, had a, had a suggestion for that. Yeah, thank you, and through you, uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to remind committee members that, unfortunately, due to recent changes by the provincial government, we no longer have the ability to require landscaping through site plan control. We can control street trees. Uh, landscaping on private property, however, we have lost that ability. Uh, we will, of course, 
work with the applicant to make sure that we can encourage them to do that, but we can no longer make it a hard requirement, unfortunately. Thank you. Continue, Councillor Glenn. Thank you, Mr. Park. I appreciate the clarification. Um, so I am just going to ask for some further encouragement um, to add greenery wherever possible. Um, you know, looking at the plan, I'm just wondering if there's opportunity to, in the, the tip of that triangle, to add some up, up at that end. Um, I don't know if that's a possibility, but just uh, an additional thought, and I'll, uh, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shaves. All yours. Thank you. Uh, um, I want to beat this little dead horse a little bit in regards to parking and garage. I've heard two different things in regards to parking garage. I just want to get clarification. I understand two floors. Are both these floors going to be interior and secure? For clarification. Through you, Mr. Chair, yes. So, yes. So, is so all the parking is interior and secure? So there's no That's surface correct. parking? Okay, because I believe Mohammed had mentioned there were ground floor parking. Um, in regards to the commercial, which is the first floor, are, are you aware at this current time how many units there's going to be? Is it one unit or is it going to be divided? Uh, it's essentially intended that the current tenant, being the martial arts use, will return to the site. Presumably, they'll need the whole space. Um, however, that's you know subject to future uh, discussion with the owner. Okay. Um, so going back to your answers, my first question in regards to the two parking levels being secure. How would a visitor? or a visitor to the commercial find parking if they're both interior and secure? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we'll have to discuss that with the owner on how to best manage the site. Because I'm gonna guess that either they have a garage door opener or there's a passcode in order to enter and if you want this building to be secure and the, the residents want to be secure in their building, um, having sort of strangers enter there with, who are not um, asked to attend or pr have permission could be a secure feature for the residents there. Um, uh, I also understand. You I believe uh, staff have an answer for you, Councillor Shaves. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the owner just confirmed that the um, uh, the underground parking is going to be secure, and then the above uh, ground parking accessed off Princess Street is intended to be open. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Shaves. Okay, so the upper level ground floor is like surface parking to confirm? Yes, that's what was said. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have 30, well, according to proposals, 33 parking spaces, I believe 11 on the surface parking. I'm not sure how that's gonna be divided between residential and commercial. Um, even though you're not placing parallel parking on Woodbine Road, there's gonna be that overflow either by visitors, residents, commercial customers that will decide to either park there on their own and or they're going to be having the parking uh, on the adjacent strip mall parking lot. Um, as mentioned, you had mentioned that possibly the current commercial resident may return. They had a pretty large parking lot, which you're saying that we're not losing any parking, but with the number of classes that they had, that parking was pretty much used just for the customer clients. So there's a bit of a concern there. Um, so in regards to the number of parking, could you share how many, how that's gonna be divided between resident car sharing, visitor and commercial? Uh, 
Uh, three, Mr. Chair, um, I think a, a, a simple response would be is that we are providing, providing the minimum parking requirement with respect to the zoning bylaw. Um, the matters that um, are being raised at the moment with respect to the split of parking and, and so on, um, uh, to me, it's a, it's a site management issue and, and site plan uh, control issue um, that uh, we're, we're addressing the zoning bylaw at today's meeting. Uh, the comment is absolutely heard and understood. I, I very much appreciate the concern. And um, as, a, as uh, my colleague James and I were, were discussing, this is a new zoning bylaw. And uh, me personally and professionally uh, trying to wrap our head around this and how it's going to work. Um, so, uh, so we're with you on this and uh, that we'll be uh, definitely continuing this discussion. Good. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Barr, go ahead. Councillor Shays, I did just want to provide you some information there. Because they are proposing parking that's in line with the new zoning bylaw, uh, the report that came in from Mr. Legere did detail all of that in there, and it is on the drawing. So I'll just give you a quick breakdown of what that looks like in terms of numbers. So they've got 30 dwelling units proposed here. They need 24 in, for the minimum parking requirement for the residential units. They need 1.5 for their car share spaces, and they need 4.5 for their visitor spaces. So some total that all together, they need 30 parking spaces for the 30 units. That's essentially kind of how that works out at the end of the day. And then they're also providing three parking spaces for their commercial. So the building in its sum total for the commercial and the residential spaces that are there have 33 spaces proposed. Um, so that's currently what has come in with this application. Just for clarification, Mr. Barr, there are 33 residential units in this proposal, not 30? I'm looking at 30 in the site plan. So I've seen 30 residential units proposed here, five one bedroom, 16 two bedroom, and nine three bedroom. Okay, because I believe somewhere in the report I should mention 33. There are 33 parking spaces. If that's in the staff report, we uh, we may have misspoken there. So I apologize for that. We'll clarify that for you, Councillor Shays. Thank you. Um, in regards to the bikes, uh, Ed mentioned, uh, well, it was shared with me that there's 27. Um, so you're saying there's 37 long-term uh, bike racks. Is that, are they secure? And are there also short-term bike racks? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, there's a, there's definitely a split of both. So 27, um, I'm just looking, I'm going back to my chart here that's in the planning justification report. Uh, so minimum number required for long-term spaces is 0.9 per dwelling unit. Uh, minimum requirement for short-term par uh, bike parking spaces is 0.1 per dwelling unit. Uh, so in total, that totals 30. Um, and then we have an additional requirement for retail restaurant uses is what we utilized um, in our analysis. Um, and uh, between long-term and short-term, a total of five is required. And so we are providing the full uh, requirement of 35 bicycle parking spaces. Um, those that are, um, as clarified by the owner, those that are located in the uh, lower level parking area will be secured. And those that are provided in the upper level uh, uh, parking area uh, will be um, uh, more easily accessible. Uh, but uh, of course, with the bicycle parking uh, space, you know, there's of course the opportunity to secure bikes individually as well. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned in your presentation or it was in your presentation that the building would be three meters from Prince Street. Now, to correct me if I'm wrong, that's three meters from the front lot line on Prince Street, which I asked a question about the distance from the sidewalk. And I was informed that it was actually seven meters from the sidewalk to the building. Am, am I correct in that? City staff, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so that was a clarification from myself to Councillor Chaves. Uh, the uh, distance from the building to the front lot line is about three meters, and I provided a rough calculation from the front lot line to the sidewalk is about four meters. Uh, so therefore, it, the building would be about seven meters from the sidewalk. 
Thank you, Mr. Pedgy. Go ahead, Councillor Shaves. Thank you. Um, now, I'm just wondering about green initiatives. Uh, as you're probably aware, I'm hoping you're in support of, the city has declared a climate crisis and we're trying to do what we can to reduce our carbon emissions and be carbon neutral. I'm just wondering what initiatives are you taking in order to have this uh, building to be carbon neutral? You mentioned about uh, green space on your common area on the first floor. Is there anything for the, the roof itself? Are you, are you having, like, how are you energy efficient will the building be? A three, Mr. Chair. So with yourself, start with the uh, what would be minimum requirements, and, and that's speaking to the Ontario Building Code. Uh, so it's, it's a new building, and so it'd be constructed to current Ontario Building Code uh, energy efficiency and water efficiency standards. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's not a retrofit, it's, it's a new build. Um, uh, one of the main, uh, two of the main green initiatives, uh, uh, sorry, and, and also speaking to the minimum requirements uh, are to provide bicycle parking. Uh, so again, we're trying to shift, make the modal shift from ve uh, personal vehicles, uh, motor vehicles to, to using public transit and, and uh, other modes such as bicycles. So we're providing on-site bicycle parking. Um, and then as previously mentioned during my parking uh, summary, uh, uh, the owner is committing to uh, providing electric vehicle charging stations as well for residents. Uh, are you providing like heat by heat pump or is this going to be natural gas? Sorry, electric vehicle charging stations are electric? No, in regards to the overall heating of the building. I'm just wondering if it's uh, going to be natural gas or heat pump. Uh, I'm not aware of any heat pump. Uh, uh, I'll have to discuss with the client on that. Uh, you know, typically it would be natural gas, uh, but uh, you know, again, this is getting into detailed construction questions uh, that we just simply don't know yet. Um, so I'll bring that forward with the owner and, and uh, to to ask if uh, he's interested in in, in um, uh, utilizing perhaps a heat pump system. Uh, but those systems have not been determined yet. Okay, I decided to bring it up now because we yeah. are having some developers building in in town now that are basically building facilities which are carbon neutral. So I just wonder if it can be following suit or not. So, um, and just to reiterate what Councillor Glenn and Councillor um, Osanica mentioned about the trees, um, I'm quite certain that the the trees that are being replaced are mature, maybe not uh, uh, large redwoods. And I'm just wondering if you're gonna replace them with, with the saplings or are you gonna have more mature trees other than like sampling, a little more mature than, than those. So, and then also, as I know, uh, Mr. Parker mentioned, are the, we can't do much in regards to greenery and landscaping, but we're also trying to encourage pollinators. So I uh, was wondering if natural bushes as been mentioned and, and uh, flower beds would also be included. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like any uh, ask to ask any other questions? Councillor Janani, please go ahead. Most of the questions have been asked, but uh, especially about uh, what green features it was going to have, or if it was net zero, or using uh, uh, new technologies. But um, I had another question. Somebody mentioned a number of accidents there. Um, I don't know if we can have these numbers or if we have access to, like, do we know what the official number of accidents are in that area compared to similar areas possibly? Uh, three, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Go ahead and after you, oh, uh, Director sorry. Park yeah, can sorry, continue. I thought, I thought someone else was talking over me, but I might be hearing some feedback. Uh, three, Mr. Chair, uh, it's that is detailed in the traffic impact study. Uh, uh, we have Mohammed here that can get to add more detail, uh, but essentially, uh, from what I understand in reviewing the traffic impact study, that the, the um, uh, information that was collected by our traffic engineer that um, uh, it, uh, accidents are focused at the Princess Street intersection uh, 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 at uh, Midland and Bay Ridge. Um, and uh, that it's largely during inclement weather. 
Um, so that's that's what I recall from the traffic impact study. Uh, but uh, Mohammed, if there's anything else to add to that, uh, please um, please chime in. Sure, I'm I'm going through the report to trying to remember what I see. It uh, it says it is uh, readily seen that uh, Bay Ridge Drive and Wood, Woodbine Road intersection and Bay Ridge Drive and uh, and Cedarwood Drive intersection had very low collision, an average of one collision, an average of one collision per year. That would suggest that these intersections are not hot spot or collision prone areas. This is what I see. But like there is there is a section of the report uh, and with the related tables that uh, city staff has reviewed and has access. But this is one sentence from that. Thank you. And Director Park, you'd like to add some more? Uh, thank you, and through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, when the application is going through technical review, because members of the public and the committee members have raised the concern of traffic accidents, uh, the transportation services will have that data. It's supplied to them by Kingston Police, and they can look at it on sort of the current basis. And if it is an issue, it will be something that they can address in their comments. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Chinani, go ahead. Oh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for round two? Councillor Osanek, please continue. Thank you. Just one quick question through you, Mr. Chair. Um, are we going to be keeping these as apartments, or is that not decided and they might turn into condos? Do we know yet? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, this is being proposed as a rental uh, residential rental apartment project. Uh, so that's that's all the information we, we have this time. Uh, I'm not aware of any contemplation of converting this this facility into, into condominiums at this time. Thank you. We need more rentals. So thank you. Councillor Shaves, round two. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on Councillor Chinani's concern in regards to the accident issue, and I believe I heard Mohammed mentioned that the, um, the study was looking at the intersections of Bay Ridge and Woodbine and Bay Ridge and Princess Street. And only one accident happens per year on average. I'm not sure if it's uh, both of those or at each uh, or combined, but I would tend to think that number's a little skewed because if memory, if I'm not mistaken, there's a red light camera at the corner of Princess and Bay Ridge Drive. For it to be there, that would have been a sufficient number of accidents in order for it to be put there by our, our traffic department. So, just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, so, to all the people who made comments and questions, um, they've been heard by the applicant and uh, they will be adjusting it. Uh, their reports and their plans as they go forward. You've empowered staff to um, push essentially the issues that you brought forward that you feel are most important. And um, I look forward to the comprehensive report when it comes out. Thank you. So I will now close this public meeting and move on to the regular meeting, calling, a, calling the new meeting to order. Uh, I will ask for an approval of the agenda. May, oh, sorry. With the addendum, Councillor Shaves, Councillor Chinani, all in favor, raise your hands. That passes unanimously. Confirmation of the minutes. I will need a mover. Councillor Glenn, Councillor Osanek, all those in favor. Great, we all agree with the great job the clerk has been doing. Uh, the closure of pecuniary interest, not to worry because there's nothing else to do. Delegations, there are none. Briefings, there are none. Business, there are none. Motions, there are none. Notices of motion, anybody? None. Other business? None. Correspondence, well, we got that. The date of next meeting is May 25th at 6 p.m. 2023. Now I would like a motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Glenn, Councillor Osanek, all those in favor, and we are adjourned. You may all go home now and enjoy this last little bit of sunlight. <laughs>